Hello everyone, good morning. It's another lovely Monday. We're having mathematics. And before we go into our topic, I want us to look at a quick riddle. So let's see how many of us can figure out the answer to this riddle. All right. So a dog was given $9. A spider was given $36. And a B was given $27. Now, based off of this information, how much do you think should be given to a cat? <laughs> yes, yeah, so you give, um, we were just sitting around looking at some animals and okay, we said, okay, take this $9 for the duck, take this $20, um, $36 for the spider and take $27 for the B. So someone asked, okay, there's a cat over there and let's try to give the cat some money as well. So how much do you think would be given to the cat? Just try to study the pattern, see if you can find any pattern and you'll be good to go, okay? So if you can get the answer, let me know in the comment section. You can just pause it and try to think, okay? So just stay tuned. By the end of the lesson, you would find out if you were correct or not, okay? All right, so let's move on and see what we have for today. So today we're going to be looking at a topic, but before that, let me introduce you to this or let me refresh your memory about this. I'm sure most of us um, are familiar with this already. So um, I know you have heard of place value. When we talk about place value, that's the value of each digit in a number, right? Okay, so when we talk about place values in base 10, which is the usual um, counting base that we've been used to for, you know, as many years as you have been in school, you know, when we talk about those place values, you hear something like units, yeah, the first digit is usually in the unit digit, then we say tens, then we say hundreds, then we say thousands, if you remember this. And after that, you have, you know, on and on to ten of, tens of thousands, um, hundreds of thousands, and so on and so forth. You know, sometimes we go as far as billion, trillion, and the likes, right? Now, this is what you have been doing, um, you know, from primary school, from grade one, um, or primary two, primary three, and on and on. Now, this class or this lesson is going to introduce you to something different, uh, some of us might have heard about it already. Yeah, but this is going to introduce you to something different. Now, there are so many other ways that we can count uh, apart from base 10. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at counting in base 2 now. Counting in base 2. So let's look at the place values in base 2. Now, instead of units and tens and hundreds and thousands, we're going to have units and twos and fours and eights. So basically, each place value is increasing by two. You know, when you were counting in base 10, each place value has an increase of 10, right? You know, from 10, from units to tens, okay, then 10 times 10 is 100, you know, and it keeps increasing with a value of 10. But when you're talking about um, base two now, the values increase with a value of two. And yeah, I, I guess you're probably wondering, why is this base 2 so necessary? Why can't I just stick with, you know, counting in base 10 and just move on with that? But, you know, in daily life, there's so many things that we need to understand. For example, um, when you're talking about base 2 now, there's a very, very peculiar thing, or should I say a very peculiar uh, concept that requires the knowledge of base 2. Of, of counting in base two, and that concept is, you know, computers. Yeah, yeah, computers actually um, are a very major factor or very major component of the base binary system. You know, uh, you you know as well as I do that computers don't necessarily understand our language, right? They understand programming languages, right? Yeah, and the binary system is very crucial to the the, the study of computers. And that's just one. That's just one of it. Remember also that if you're, if you're to put on a light switch, there are two states that the light switch can be in. It can be either on or off, right? So 
you, you really have to have an idea of um, the binary system. You're going to need it in so many aspects of life, depending on, how, you know, the, the path you choose anyway. But it's a good thing to have knowledge of other bases apart from the base 10. Of course, we have counting in base 7, which helps us to understand, you know, days of a week. You know, how you start at um, Sunday and then move to Saturday and then you repeat, right? So there's so many other bases, you know, counting. We, we also count in 60s. When we talk about minutes, seconds, hours, and so on and so forth. So it's important that you understand all the bases about from base 10. But for today, we're going to be focused on the binary system. So like I said, you start from units and then you go to twos and then you go to fours and then you go to eights. Okay, and it goes on and on. But there's a peculiar way you can represent these values in terms of the powers of two. So you can say you start from 2 raised to the power 0, which is 1, which stands for the units. Then you say 2 raised to the power of 1. Then you say 2 raised to the power of 2. And then you say 2 raised to the power of 3. Okay, so it's, it's, we have a long way to go. Let's just move to the topic now. So binary base, or when we say the binary system, has just two digits. We count with just two digits. Unlike the um, normal base 10 you're used to where you count with 10 digits, starting from 0 down to 9, right? But no, we're not doing that here. We're counting with just two digits, which are 0 and 1, which are 0 and 1. So let's see how we count. Uh, we actually start from 0, and then we move to 1. And then when we move to 1, after 1, there's no digit such as 2 or 3 or 4 to, to utilize. So we start back at 0 and put add a 1. So we have 1, 0. Then we go to 1, 1. Then if we get to 1, 1, we start back at 0 and put 1, 0. So 1, 0, 0. And then we keep counting in that way. Okay, and then we keep counting in that way. So I want you to understand that there is no digit uh, after 1. We, we don't have 2. We don't have 3. Okay, so those digits take on a new meaning in binary in the binary system. For example, if I want to say 2, which would have been present in base 10, in the binary system, I would say 1, 0. Okay, 1 and 0, right? If I want to say 3 instead of 3, I would say 1, 1 instead of 3. Okay, so just take note that the counting is completely different. Now, this is just a, a, a quick... Uh, should I say summary of some of the digits that we have in the um, decimal uh, as decimals or as denary numbers and as binary numbers. So zero remains as zero, one is still one. But instead of two now, we say one zero. Instead of three, we say one one. Instead of four, we say one zero zero and so on and so forth. So you need to try to be familiar with some of these, um, you know, digits. Now let's go on to the binary system fully. Yeah, that's our topic. So let's start with expansion. Now, let's assume you actually expand these numbers in terms of their bases. Now, the first number there is in base 10 and the second number there is in base 2. So if we wanted to expand these numbers, you know, and actually see how the values are laid out, this is how we'll do that. First of all, we would assign um, powers to each digit starting from behind, okay? So the, the, the last digit, you know, gets a power of zero, followed by one, and then two, and on and on. So for nine, we would get a power of zero. For eight, we'll have a power of one. For three, that should be a power of two, and for two, we'd have a power of three. Now, we can do the expansion by taking each digit, multiplying by the base, and raising to the power. Okay, don't get, don't get it confused. So we have 2 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay, then plus 3 times 10 to the power of 2. And again, plus 8 times 10 to the power of 1. And again, plus 9 times 10 to the power of 0. Okay, so you don't need to, if we, of course, if we add this back up, we're going to arrive back with the same answer. But that just shows you, you know, the, the, the value of each digit. So if I were, if I were to get the value of the digit two now, I would say 10 raised to the power of three means 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1000. So the value of that digit two is a thousand. Okay. So this also assists you to, you know, understand the value of each digit. 
Now, for the same thing applies in base 2, okay? It's just that now instead of multiplying by powers of 10, we're going to be multiplying by 2, powers of 2. So we're going to have, first of all, assigned powers from behind. We have 0 for the digit 1, and then 1, and then 2, and then 3. So these are powers of the base. So let's expand now. We'll start with the first digit there. You have 1 times 2 to the power of 3 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. Please take note of something here. I want you to understand that any number raised to the power of 0 is actually 1. Uh, there's a song I, I usually sing with my students. Any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. <laughs> it's like a chant anyway. <laughs> so yes, anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. So just Put that behind you, uh, um, at the back of your mind somewhere. I know why I'm, you know, telling you to remember that. So let's move on. So another thing you need to be familiar with when you're talking about base 2 is the powers for 2. You know, as time goes on, you don't have to be doing 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 every time you have a power of 2. As time goes on, when you see 2 to the power of 5, you should be able to say, you know, 32, yeah? When you see 2 to the power of 4, you should be able to say, oh, that goes, that that's 16, yeah? You know, so with constant practice, you would become very familiar with the powers of 2. So let me just show you a, um, a summary of the powers of 2. So you can see this here. 2 raised to the power of 0 is 1, like we've said. 2 raised to the power of 1 is 2. 2 raised to the power of 2 is 4. And on and on and on we go, right? So as time goes on, when a person just says 2 to the power of 6, you would just be able to say 64 with a snap of your finger. Okay. So these are uh, some of the powers of 2. Now let's start with this very beautiful number here. Now I want to show you how to go from base 2 to base 10. So you want to know how to convert um, you know, a number in base 2 to base 10. It's very important that you're able to transit between one base and another. Okay, so let's talk about how to go from base 2 to base 10 using this wonderful number here. Okay, so we have to convert this. Now, how do you go from base 2 to base 10? With a snap of your fingers, how do you do that so quickly? The key thing to understand there is that you need to expand. Okay, to go from base 2 to base 10, you need to expand. You need to expand. Okay, so let's, uh, I think we looked, we saw, um, saw a glimpse of expansion at the, at the start of the class. But let's look at this now. So we start with our powers from behind, 0, and then 1, and then 2, and then 3. So then we start our expansion. We pick 1 times 2 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. Okay, so that's that. And then we can say that our value e equals, you know, 1 times 8. Remember that 2 to the power of 3 means 2 times 2 times 2, which is actually 8, right? And then this would give us 1 plus, um, plus 1 times 4, and then we'd have plus 0 times 2, and then we would have plus 1 times 1. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this. Um, I've realized that a common mistake is to change this value here to zero some people do that they say uh, after getting to this point they say one times zero here that's why I'm, i i just i said at the beginning that anything raised to the power of zero is one and not zero okay that's a common mistake that some people make okay i want us to try to avoid that so two raised to the power of zero here is one please take notes so if we if we do this properly we should have um eight here plus four Okay, plus zero, of course, and then plus one. Now, eight plus four plus one would give us a resounding 13 to the power of 10 now. Oh, sorry, to the base of 10 now. Okay, so let's start for conversion from base 10 and base two to base 10. I think it's quite easy, actually. It's quite easy and it's fun. You know, just take it one step at, at a time, number your um, digits, assign past your digits from behind, starting from zero and then expand and when you expand properly being um, cautious not to make mistakes 
you can add all your values together and you get your answer. It's as easy as, as ABC. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So I hope you're following. I hope you're following. I, I, I usually advise that you sometimes pause the video and see if you can write one or two things down, you know, see if you, you're getting what I'm saying. Okay, it's very important. Then we're going to move on to now um, base 10 to base 2. So how do we go from base 10 to base 2? We said to go from base 2 to base 10. We need to expand. Okay, what do we do when we want to go from base 10 to base 2? We want to change that number to base 2. Now, for example, we have um, 30 in base 10 to be converted to base 2. Okay, so what do we do? What do we do? All right. It's not difficult. It's very easy. We use um, something we call grouping. We group. We group. And then when, as we group in twos, we take note of the remainder. And those remainders are actually our gold. When, when we get those remainders, we've, I don't know, we've hit gold. <laughs> yeah. So you need to be very careful when you're doing your grouping. You could, you know, say division, but more, it's more like grouping anyway. So yeah, to convert from base 10 to base 2 or any other base, you group. You group, okay? So how do we do this grouping I'm talking about? We group using the particular base we're going to. So if you're going to base 2, you group in 2s. If you're going to base probably 5, you group in 5s. Although that, that's for another class, but today we're focused on base 2. Now... Let's start with 30. You create a column. You create different columns and then you put your 30. And then you create another space for your remainder. That's after you group in twos at each point, there, there might be a remainder that you should note down. Okay. So like I said, we're going to use two for our grouping. Now, how many groups of two can you get from 30? Or we could say two and 30 would go how many times, right? Okay, that's 15 remainder zero. Yeah, 15. There would be 15 groups of two um, in 30 and there would be no remainder, right? So two in 30 goes 15 times without a remainder. Then we'll do the same thing. It's almost like a repetition, right? We just keep doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing until we get to the end. Some of us don't like monotony, but well, that's the way to do this, right? You get used to it. So two again, group fifteen in twos again. Or we say, how many um how many groups of two can you get from fifteen? Or two goes in fifteen how many times? There's so many ways you can ask yourself the question. So two goes in fifteen seven good times, but there's a remainder of one, because of course two times seven is fourteen. So there's a remainder of one. Okay, you do the same thing again, 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 and then you say, how many groups of twos can I get from seven? Let's assume you had seven sticks and you want to group them in twos. How many groups of twos will you get out of those seven sticks? Okay, you would have three groups. You would have three groups, but there would be one stick left behind. Oh, I'm so sorry for that stick. There will be one stick. Okay, we could say the stick is special, right? So, so it doesn't feel so bad. So one stick will be left behind and we put that underneath our remainder. Now let's assume you now have three sticks and you want to um, group those three sticks in twos as well. How many times can you get, um, how many twos can you get from that, um, from those three sticks? So let's see, two will go in three just once, just once, but there's still a remainder of one. There's still a remainder of one. Okay. Now, this is where, uh, you know, some people tend to think they should stop here. But no, 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 no. You, you, you still need to understand that this one that is left must be converted to a remainder. So you need to state categorically that, okay, yeah, you can't get any other group of two from one. So you say two in one, of course, you can't get any other group. So zero. And then you put that one stick that cannot be, you know, divided into groups of two. You put it underneath the remainder as well. So it doesn't feel too lonely. <laughs> right? So now you have, you know, you've laid out your work. You've grouped each number in twos. You've divided with two. And then you've also been able to lay out each remainder that you obtained. Now the next step is this very important step you're going to draw an arrow. 
you're going to draw an arrow going up. So when you draw an arrow going up, you can then start to write out your answer. And your answer is going to be from the, from the bottom going up. So you have, in this case, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0. So 1, 1, 1, 1, that's 4 ones and 0 in base 2. Yeah, that's your answer. So if you want to go from base 10 to base 2, this is a cool example that you could use to, you know, apply to other examples. It's important that you practice, okay? So let's move on. I'm just going to touch a... I'm just going to take a little bit of this today. Of course, we're going to continue with the other parts of this topic in our next class. But let me just take a little bit of operations on binary numbers. So let's start with addition, which is obviously the simplest um, operation. Yeah. So addition of binary numbers is not so much, um, doesn't differ so much from the addition of, you know, numbers in base 10. The only, uh, should I say, it's more like um, a clause here. You cannot get other digits apart from zeros and ones and then two there's no digits such as two so you use one zero instead of two and then three is actually one one so those are some basic things you need to understand when you're doing this addition so let's look at the rules now first of all one plus zero is one that that is constant right it's constant here yeah? and then now instead of us to say one plus one is two right because two is not a a, a useful digit in bi in the binary system is not ad added to the binary system in base two two as a digit is actually one zero okay so one plus one is one zero in base two and one zero plus one is one one and then one one plus one is one zero zero you could use the conversion i taught you from going going from base 10 to base 2 use it to confirm that 2 in base 10 is actually one zero and confirm that you know 3 in base 10 is also one one and 4 in base 10 is one zero zero try it out and see you could pause the video and try it out or you could try it out later okay so these are the rules for addition very important rules that you need to remember now let us add two different um, set of questions. Let us add one one zero plus one one and one 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 zero one one plus one one zero. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So I have one one zero plus one one. Now I'm going to lay it out the normal way we usually lay out addition. You know you need to be very careful when you're laying out your work. You need to take account of the values, or the place values of the digits. So I'm going to lay this out like this. I'm going to lay it out like this. Now let's start with the first, the digits behind. So 0 plus 1 here gives us 1, right? Do you all agree with me? I hope you agree with me. If you don't agree with me, let me know. Now 1 plus 1 is not 2 in the binary system. Remember what I said? 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, okay? One zero. So we're going to write the zero underneath here and we're going to just take the one to the next place value. So we have one. Can you see that? I hope you're following. Now one one again, that's one plus one again is one zero. So we can, since that's the final digit there, we can just write one zero here. It's fun and it's easy. It's actually, I actually some somehow i think i prefer the binary system i know that's just my personal preference i prefer the binary system to base 10 i tell you because it's much easier right just two digits <laughs> i don't have to deal with two three four and then to nine <laughs> it's just my preference anyway but i like the binary system because i actually like things that are simplified so let's go on to the second example i hope you would get it better if you see this example now look at this um 1011 one, one plus 110 one, one, i'll set it out this way and of course i start my addition from behind so 1 plus 0 is 1 of course yeah now 1 plus 1 is not 2 in the binary system it's 2 but you cannot write 2 because this is the binary system right so we're going to use the value of 2 in the binary system which is 1 0 like I said, you could confirm with conversion and see if 
you know, 2 in base 10 actually gives 1, 0 in base 2. So 1, 0 here, and I would write a 0 underneath here and carry the 1 to the next place. So 1 plus 0, of course, is 1, and then plus 1, you know, we're adding this 3 now, okay? So 1 plus 0 plus 1 gives us 1, 0 again. So we write a 0 underneath here, and then we carry a 1, okay? Now, this 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. So we just write 1, 0 down here, okay? So it's actually very interesting and it's very easy. And it's very important that you have a knowledge of this binary system. You know, there are so many other programming languages that computers use. You know, we have, uh, let's, we can go into so many of them, C++, you know, C Sharp. Um, there's so many, there's so many advanced. Um, we have the machine language, the um, so many, so many, but it's very important that you understand the binary system because the binary system to me is kind of foundational. Yeah, it's basic. It's basic. So it's very important that you understand it. Now, what have you learned? Can you tell me what you've learned? You could type it in the comment section as you're watching now. What have you learned? What have you learned? Okay, let me just tell you what I I believe you have learned today. <laughs> Hopefully, if you've been paying close attention. Now, number one, to convert from base 2 to base 10, you expand. Or if you even want to convert from any other base, apart from base 2 to base 10, the way, the way to do that is to expand, is to expand. Then to convert from base 10 to base 2, or in fact to any other base apart from base 2, you group, okay? You need to group. We group. And when I say group, we use that base we're going to for the grouping. So if I'm going to base 2, I group in 2s. If I'm going to base 6, I group in 6. 6s. If I'm going to base 5, I group in 5s, and so on and so forth. Okay, it's a very easy concept when you know that, you know, that the two key things are expansion and grouping. Then we also learn the rules of binary addition and these are the rules. Okay, 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2 in base 10, but it's 1, 0 in base 2. And 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1. And 1, 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, 0. Okay, and then we also... Um, mentioned, took some examples on addition, and we saw how to apply those rules. Okay, so it's very simple. I say simplico for simple. I don't know. It's a language that I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if it exists, but I just say simplico. Yeah. All right, so let's go to something exciting, and let's see how many of us got the riddle. <laughs> yes, so this is the answer to the riddle. A dog has two legs, right? And the dog was given nine dollars. Oh, nine good dollars for the duck. A spider has eight legs and the spider was given thirty-six dollars. Oh, that's a lot of money for the spider, right? Let's ask the spider to give us some of his money. Now, a bee has six legs and the bee was given twenty-seven dollars. Can't you see the pattern? Can you see it? Can you notice that each leg, um, per leg, the animal is given $4.50, right? $4.50 per leg, if you really observe. Because 9 for the duck, 9 divided by 2 will give you 4.5. For the spider as well, 36 divided by 8 will give you 4.5. And for the bee as well, 27 divided by 6 will give you 4.5. So each animal in this video was given $4.5 um, per leg. Or you say $4.50 per leg. So for a lovely, lovely cat, a cat has four legs. So a cat would get $18. <laughs> so if you said $18, you're right. If you said $18, you're right. Okay, so let's go on and talk about what I want you to try out on your own. So I want you to try to evaluate this addition in base 2. And I want you to try to convert this number from base 10 to base 2. And also convert this 
um, express 1011 in base 10 express it as a number in base 10 then if you uh if you if you would like to you could visit quizzes.com and you'll see some games on binary numbers and you can just play them to test your capabilities okay so it has been lovely 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 um discussing with you guys again after some time uh, i hope you continue to have a lovely day and i'll see you for mathematics in our next class okay bye, -bye. don't forget to like the video share to your friends of course you need to subscribe for weekly updates yeah so take care and do have a wonderful day bye